I just knew it. We should have arrived an hour ago. You need to pay up front. We always work with Novamed like that. Things are changing in Novamed. I'm in charge now and I'm the boss. Hi, good morning. Good day. I'm sorry, he's in a meeting. Do I have to introduce myself to you? Miss Eleonora, tea or coffee maybe? Look, there's the contract. You either want to work or you don't. Visitors from the department, may they come in? Contact my lawyer. Tell them to come here. I need all the paperwork on the inheritance. That will be the first and last time I wait at the lobby. And I waited for long. <laughs> Supply and demand. <laughs> you haven't ever dreamt of that kind of demand. <sighs> to any hospitals? Mm hmm. And each requires two ultrasound neuro-navigation devices with that 3D thing of yours. My 3D neuro-visualization. An expensive venture. I need to treat you too. It's nothing. It's not nothing. And you must know that. You're a doctor. Or are you not? Are you on leave? Or have you resigned? Do we have to discuss that? All right, we won't. I registered the ward for four days. Is that enough for you? I think so. Before the accident, it would be fine. But now... Pavel, you need to get some rest. I'll be here with her. Pavel. She's my patient. And you're mine. Your condition scares me. What condition? What exactly scares you? You think I'll pass out or what? I am perfectly fine. Pavel. Tatiana. What do you want from me? What do you want? For her to survive. It'll be all right. Together, we'll manage. You need to get some rest. You came to us for help, Avel. So please, be so kind and do what I tell you to do. Go get something to eat, relax, and take care of yourself. No. Muscle relaxants will wear off. In three hours. Do you have these drugs here? All right, then. I'll go to the lab myself and mix them for you. Please go and rest now. I got this. Look, the patient's fine. She's stable right now. Her pulse is at 50. Pressure's nominal. Pavel, please rest.
Don't tell anyone. Okay? Please. Anna, hello. It's Tatiana Legler. Oh, hello. I'm so glad that you called me. I thought about you just recently. How are you doing? Well, I'm fine. Thank you for asking. I'm calling about Pavel. I spoke to him over the phone yesterday. You know? He wanted to visit you? No, he said he wanted to talk. I think he's on the edge. He hasn't been this strange for a while. It scares me as well. He's quiet, doesn't say anything, doesn't share, he keeps it all in. And now he just left. He didn't even inform anyone about it. Listen, does Pavel have a problem with alcohol? Does he drink a lot? I don't think so. If he drank, it would actually be simpler. Why did he resign from work? Actually, I don't know. There's this one girl who was in a coma here and Pavel tried his best to save her. And I think she was able to hold him together, in a way. Unfortunately, she died. The woman died? Um... My condolences. I figured if she had gotten better, Pavel would as well, but... So, how are you doing? Have you already became a forest wish there? I... I'm doing just fine. I was invited to work as the head doctor in the village. I thought about it. Now I relocated. It's not very close. Yet there's this good and modern hospital here, but no doctors are willingly able to work and live here. So yeah, I guess I'm a head doctor. Congratulations. If I ever get fired, I'm coming to you. <laughs> All right. I'll be waiting for you. Come work here. Listen, did Pavel plan on coming to you? Oh no, I don't think so. Oh, I see. Thanks so much, Tatiana, for caring about him. If Pavel is helping himself by helping patients, then I think that he'll be all right on his own. Yes, I just hope that the blind won't leave the injured. <sighs> My apologies. You look familiar to me. Have we met before? No, I don't think so. <laughs> no. My memory has served me well so far. The moment I walked in, I realized that I know this person. You from St. Petersburg? Uh, I come from Moscow. Oh, well, you see now, I doubt we ever crossed paths. You're thinking of someone else. My apologies, then. It's okay, it happens. Has it <clears throat> happened to you before? Yes, it does. Quite often, in fact. I did not mean to offend you. Do you want a drink? Maybe next time. How much do I owe? It's 350, sir. All right. Here you go. Thank you. Finally, I was ready to look for you. Why? What happened? First of all, I found out that the woman you brought to my hospital is officially deceased. Does that seem normal, Pavel? How did you know? You spoke to Anna? Listen up. If you really want me to put my trust in you, if you want me to help you, you must never lie to me. Do you get it? I didn't tell anyone about you two, not even Anna. She's deteriorating. A fever? No. Low blood pressure. It looks just like high fever. She's sweating a lot. Pavel, do you really think that this is normal? It looks like abstinence, just like withdrawal symptoms. I don't mean that. I mean you, Pavel. I'm fine, really. I'm managing. 
Managing. But you shouldn't be managing. You're human too. You're allowed to feel pain and enough. you're just... Enough. That's enough You're now. running, Stop Pavel. It. You're running and clinging onto patients. Tatiana, you want them to go live. home. We'll do the test tomorrow. Why are you beating yourself up? Remember, their deaths are not your fault. Go home now. It's my fault. Male patient, 17 years old. What happened? He played street basketball. He hit his head hard at one point. Hang on. Is the cardiogram ready now? Thank you. Not bad? Is the skull cracked? Uh, no. No exterior damage. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, doctor. So, how are you feeling, young man? I'm good. Well, that's great. Doctor, his head hurts for a long time. Let's do this, then. We'll do an MRI on your son, you know, just in case. And the headaches that you're feeling, well, you need to be careful and fall less. And if you do, protect the head. Do the second diagnostic. All right. It looks clear. Uh, what's this? Artifact. Let's see another angle. <clears throat> right here. There's neoplasm. Well, it's still small, but it does look like a tumor. You did well. It's an accessible spot. Will you let me cut it? Sorry, but no. I mean, you know you can't lead a surgery yet, right? Well... Tell Kennedy, let him do it. You're gonna assist him, right? A neoplasm? Is it malignant? That's unlikely. We can only answer that after the surgery. So he needs surgery after all. Don't worry. The neoplasm is extremely small. It'll be fine. But since you're already here, why not? So then, it's good that he fell and bumped his head. Yes, or else we wouldn't know. You can call it a lucky fall. I'll prepare the operating room. Pavel, hello. Hello, Anna. I have problems. Well, she does. Sorry, what? Who has problems? Where are you? It doesn't matter. It's better if you don't know where I am. Trust me on this. All right. Um, uh, who has problems? My patient does. She's in a coma. I'm trying to pull her out of sedation. 
Pavel, are you all right there? I mean, she died, right? Not quite. She's alive. Pavel, you're really scaring me now. I read the report myself. She was cremated. No, she's alive. Anna, I have not gone crazy yet. I know how this all looks to you. I lied to everyone. I faked her death, but I had no other options. <sighs> Do you understand what you're doing? Look, I simply had no other choice. <sighs> Anna. What's her vitals? <sighs> Tachycardia, pulse 120. It went up to 145. Blood pressure's fine. Looks like an endocrine disorder caused an increase in adrenaline secretion. I added cyclosporin. That's a bad idea. Yeah. Was it a mistake? Yes. Try to sharply reduce the speed of the drug administration. Her body will start fighting and the immune system will respond. It's time for her to wake up. Is it not dangerous? Pavel, was it not dangerous stealing her and creating this situation? <sighs> All right. I heard you. Thank you so much. I'll keep you updated. Okay then, Dr. Shulgin. You wanted a difficult patient? You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Didn't bother to call an ambulance. Drove himself here. Th I thought he died There's already. an internal bleeding in the stomach. Rupture of internal organs. Bruised kidney. Capsular hematoma of the liver. Ruptured spleen. It's pointless. He'll die. Hold on, doctor. This is a decent hospital. We don't let our patients die in our care. And the longer you talk, the less time he has left, so let's move. What do you want? What do you think we should do? A nephrectomy won't cut it here. I want you to perform a splenectomy, and then we can- Are you completely can... insane? If he doesn't croak during the surgery, he will definitely die after it. I already called the ambulance. They will take him. That's great, then. We'll perform a transfusion and wait. They will be here in 40 minutes. He won't last that long. <sighs> Dr. Legler. I am not prepared to take responsibility for such a tough case. There's no time for fear. We need to operate. If doctors are cowards, what? Must people die now? I'm sorry, but I can't help you. Fine, I'll do it myself then. I just thought that you are the man I once knew, Pavel. Turns out you aren't. Get ready for surgery. Move it. He doesn't even look like him. He looks about three. He'll fall again now. Yep. I told you. That's what kids do. Thirty-nine already. I'd suggest seven fifty milligrams of uh Tetrioxone. <sighs> Let's cut to the chase. Go there. You know you need to. She won't manage without you. His pressure is holding. Bleeding is slowing down. Because he has no blood left. We added over a liter. That's too much for a kidney injury. You attach a drainage tube now. Drainage tube 12. Thank you. Okay, that's good. Thank you. 
Now make a 10 centimeter cut towards you. Scalpel. Tissue. Mm, that's good. Clamp down on the hepatic stock. Mm hmm. Clamp, please. Find it and clamp it. You'll be fine. It's vital to establish hemostasis now. I needed your support for it. To the right. Deeper. Right there. Yoletta, honey, you there? My love! You know I don't like those kinds of things. I cannot help anyone. I cannot save anyone. I cannot save anyone. I can't save you. I'm not going to repeat myself, you wretched wish. I said come here now! I'm done for. I'm done for. I'm done for. Dr. Legler, we talked about this. The ambulance is on the way. We're not exposing the patient to any risk. Who is this? He's my friend, Pavel Andreev. What's this? Call a friend and help from the audience? Pressure's dropping. Rupture of the superior mesenteric. No. We'll have to open the stomach now. Scalpel. We won't make it. And I told you to leave it alone. Well, periscopically, maybe. It's a rupture. We can't locate it that easily. We need to cut him open. Tatiana. Here. Leave my operating room. Look, the rupture is right there. What are you doing here? Right, Dr. Shulgin, step away. You're refused anyway. Scalpel. Here? Yes. I don't want to kill him, but you're doing that anyway. Go on. Mm-hmm. What's next? Okay. Two fingers into the incision. Deeper. Found it? Yes, I got it. Clamp it now. Clamp, please. Block the artery. One clamp won't be enough. Hand me another. Bullet. Be careful. Why so gloomy? Are we mourning? Did your wife die recently, or am I mistaken? Life is short anyway. We have no time for mourning. We move on and live. By the way, I decided to redecorate the house a bit. You don't like something? Mm-hmm. This painting in the living room. See, I don't like it in here. You don't like Dad's portrait? Well, it was stylish, but no more. We'll move it. But I like it. Where it is right now. Then buy your own house and hang it. You know you can hang whatever you want there. This fish? Mmm. Phenomenal. Hang it in your bedroom and enjoy it all you want. Well, thank you both. I cannot believe it. That stupid moron. Well, we can hang it in your bedroom. Are you crazy? He has no right to treat me like that, all right? Or you, for that matter, that is your father after all.
All right, let's go. So who was that guy? Who do you mean? He didn't even touch a single scalpel, but... Yes, but he showed where to cut, didn't he? Yeah, sure, but still. But still what? We got lucky today. If it turned out like my case in Moscow, we'll need a black bag. You think we should have left him to die? Is that it? No one was planning to let him die. We would set up drainage, administer antibiotics, and waited peacefully. To be completely honest with you, Dr. Shulgin, I agreed to hire you in this hospital so you could be an active surgeon. Not so that you could wait for help. <laughs> Lucky. Why is there no luck in this capital's largest clinic, then? Luck is what matters. And if photos in in life, I'm not in the picture. Who takes photos like that? Natalia? Did you remove the art? Hmm. Natalia? You do know my name. I thought you don't notice me. I couldn't even talk to you before. But now, when no one is stopping me, I can speak my mind to you. You're pragmatic, but extremely simple, too. You want to be my friend so that I won't kick you out of the house? No. You need money? No. I do love you. I've always loved you. It's just that whilst you were married to her, I... All right, hang on easy. Are you insane or what? No. I want to be with you. <sighs> Listen to me carefully now. In the kitchen on the bottom shelf, there's some calming pills. I think you need a few. Pleasuring yourself will help too. Go, Dad. You wanted to meet him. You decided that for yourself. You must get up. You must wake up. Don't listen to anyone. There's no one there to save you. It's your dream, your own nightmare. Leave me alone. Do you hear me? <laughs> Leave now. I can't stand you. Leave me alone. Get out. You have to wake up now. I can't do it. Help me. You can't Please, hide from your yourself, help. and especially not to me. Got it? I will always find you. I will find you. You need to wake up, and you're refusing to do it. Open your eyes. Wake up. Yuleta, Yuleta, calm down. Listen to my voice. Wake up, wake I'm up! Here. It's okay. Listen to me. This is important. Wake up. Listen to my voice. I beg you. Wake up! I'm here! I'm here! Wake up! Wake up! I'm wake, up here. wake up! Wake up! I'm wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! We're fine. It's all fine. Close You're fine. Your eyes now. Sleep tight, my love. That's right. What if she can hear you? Me and you both, in fact. We should have a meeting, huh? Sergey, stop it. I don't need any of your advice. And don't you dare mention them! Just don't! You don't know! You don't know anything at all! I said, shut up already, Sergey! You are not real, so shut up now! Pavel... Who is Sergei? You're showing strange behavior. Aggression. And hallucinations. Yes. Main indicators of pathological changes in the brain. Oh. You know, I had a CT scan done. 
No tumor, no bleeding either. Physically, the brain is fine. And you as a doctor, why don't you diagnose yourself? Sure. And? PTSD. Post-traumatic stress disorder. It doesn't sound bad. Right. And the Sergei, he's... Yeah. The one and only. My friend. How real does he appear to you? I'm afraid it's not the only thing that's not real. I can see non-existent things all around me. That is why I refuse to operate. I am afraid that... I'll see something that's not there. I have no right to operate. Have you spoken to a specialist, to Irina, for example? What did she say to you? Always the same thing. Antidepressants. I don't need them. All right. Then let's pick out a different course for you. For what? For me to relax? To calm down? To forget everything? Forget them? All right. Understood. <sighs> Did your surgeon already cool off? Yes, he did. Actually, that's his normal self. He just had an incident in Moscow. Once, so... And then he died just like that. During the surgery? No. Don't accuse me. The surgery is perfect. I was amazing back then. Brave and perfect. It was going well. And then he had a stroke. And I was blamed for it. So you were sent here as punishment? Mm-hmm. I was exiled here, in the middle of absolute nowhere. Our hospital is fine. Yes, it is indeed. One surgeon, that's me. The head doctor's a woman. Listen, sir. We, uh, we are closing. Are you offended? My bad, woman. She's crazy, sure. But she's cute, too. And she has character. So what is this now? You'll seduce me? You definitely watch too many stupid movies, I'll tell you that. But it's hilarious. Good job. I know that you didn't love her. How is she better than me? Is she better? Jump up. What? I told you to jump. <laughs> You're really desperate. Yes. The four plays too drawn out for such a simple thing. <laughs> Good morning. Hello. You don't mind that I called you in early? It's all right. Surgery is simple, but I wanted to see you early. You're so sly. Plus, you're the best at your job. Don't flatter me. And you're pretty. Okay, enough. Go, I'll catch up with you, okay? All right. 
Hello, Pavel. Yes, I'm at the hospital. How is she? She's getting worse by the hour. You started decreasing the dosage? Yeah, she even regained some motor skills, but... Her fever shot up to 39 today. This is bad. Got it. Uh, I think she just needs to weather the stage and continue with the decreases in her meds. But last time she had a serious fit. I do not want to risk it. Decrease the dosage. Gradually, continually, it will be fine. 39 is not yet critical. All right, understood. <sighs> wow, what have you done? What have I done? Mom, good morning. Did you sleep well? Very well. So where were you last night? What do you mean by that? I walked past your room and I saw that you were not there. I was in the bathroom, all's good. Oh, all right. Good morning. Some breakfast? No, I'm already late. Let me prepare something quick. By the way, do you know that you snore? I couldn't sleep. That was so quick. Think what you want, I should get ready. Mm hmm. These tumors are rare in children. The most aggressive are in males. Good thing we found it. And here she is, our fantastic meningioma. It's so tiny. Yes, it could even be calcified, which makes it benign at this point. It is relatively new. Yeah, about a year old. Coagulator, dissector. We'll remove this tiny thing. We'll do it right now. Oh no, I tore something. Pressure's dropping. Lida, assist me. I can't see a thing. Suction. Where's all this blood coming from? Increase suction. More, more. I think it was an unusually large vein. Goss! Hemostatic clamp. Plugging now. I need more. What's with coagulation? Look, it's okay. We need blood type 2-2 two, two doses. It's okay. Cut veins like this can always be blocked by gauze. We just need a few minutes. My goodness. Doctor. Let me help with that. Thank you. I cannot seem to do anything well right now. Yeah, I feel the same. I do. Do you know how they're doing? It's actually really easy and simple in there. There you go. Thank you. We're happy we ended up here. It's going to be all right. Well, it already is all right. Lida Aspirate. But there shouldn't be an artery blood. here. Why so much blood? We should hurry up. Hurry up now. Coagulant, blood two doses. Lita! <laughs> okay, more. A little His more. His pressure's dropping. Stop this now, doctor. Where's the blood coming His from? His brain is oozing. What? Connecting. Transfusing. It will all be fine. We're gonna get through this. His heart stopped. Assist all initiating indirect compressions. Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! 
Defibrillator! Come on! Step aside. Charge 200. Check him! No sign is rhythm. Charge to 300. Check it. Injection. Do it. Charge! Nothing. Dr. Yagorov, you need to announce the time of death. Time of death, 12.39. Are you all right? Evgeny, we all lose patience, not just you. Anna, please just don't. It was hopeless. Yes, I understand. Just please, not now. Unfortunately, during the surgery, there was a rather significant blood loss, ma'am. Your son didn't make it. How? It happens sometimes. Usually because blood no. doesn't coagulate. No. 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 This is not... Irina, tell me, what do you want from me? Nothing. Nothing. I'm just saying that we both know that Gennady will attack Evgeny any time now. He's Pavel's student, by the way. What can I do about it? Nikolai! Don't let him destroy what you and Pavel spent years building. Do something here. Don't let him break Evgeny. Because that way you will lose all your good doctors here. A patient just died. Someone has to take responsibility for that. That happens to every single surgeon in the world. We know we can't save them all. Irina, do not try to use my own words on me, okay? Nikolai. Gennady will take this chance to do anything he can just to get rid of a good surgeon who has his own will and the backbone. Tatiana, I don't know what to do. I need to call an ambulance. All right. What's wrong with her? What do I say? Critical condition, high temperature, her heart's racing. What did Anna say? Maybe the medication is wrong. Did you call her? She said reduce the dosage. Not administering antibiotics is risky. Her fever is almost at 40. I'm thinking it could be infection. The test didn't show anything? What do you think then? Do we call them or not? Pavel, I'm sorry, but do you think I need to make that decision for you? It's your call, not mine. You're either administering the drugs or we're calling the team. I begged to be part of the surgery. And I just froze there. If you weren't there, then I would be assigned and the result wouldn't change. Calm down. Hello, everyone. 
A few days ago, we admitted a patient at the hospital, a teenage boy. Head injury and loss of consciousness. He was 17 years old. His x-ray results showed a meningioma in the temporal lobe. I performed the surgery, went inside his head to remove a malignant tumor. The patient unfortunately died at 12.39 from severe blood loss. Well, did you take in an amnesis prior to? The boy's mother did not mention any illnesses that the boy had with regards to coagulation when she was signing the surgery paperwork. Dr. Yegorov, if she happened to mention it in the documents, then you would not be talking to me, but to a police officer. Dr. Fedesov, can I clarify something first? Yes, of course. Artem discovered the meningioma on the x-rays, right? Mm, yes. He observed the patient from the moment he was admitted then. That's correct. Dr. Voloshin, did you inform Yevgeny about the constant headaches which the boy was experiencing and that his mother kept feeding him aspirin to treat it? Aspirin is a well-known anticoagulant, reducing the coagulation of the blood. That was a crucial factor which led to the death of the patient. We cannot in a way ignore that factor. Similarly, we cannot shift the blame entirely on the surgeon who performed the surgery. From the moment that Dr. Pavel left, I observed a recurring problem, and it's clear now. Dr. Voloshin, do you know why the young man's mother knew nothing about her son's chronic coagulopathy? No. Right then. She hasn't seen or spoken to his father for many years now. You could have done it, you know? Find him, call him, find out if he had any chronic illnesses. But you deemed that the paperwork and medical history to be enough. So starting tomorrow, I will take full control of the neurosurgical department. Dr. Volokoshin is sadly temporarily dismissed from the said position. Thank you, that's all. Violetta, my love! Get away from me! <laughs> wake up! Wake up! Wake up! I can't do it! Wake up! Violetta, it's all right. You've just woken up. We're in the hospital. Violetta, baby. It's time you visited Daddy. Oh, no. No. Not like that. Stay away from me! All, all right. It's okay. Relax. I'm standing still. Use it. Cut yourself. Do it now. Go on. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it, you crazy! 